So it is true, we officially have some problems and the problems are arising because of what President Biden is asking for and what Congress is willing to give it. But I wanna address what's happening here because this is something that is going to impact millions and millions of Americans. We're gonna see this impact people in uh, Lahaina, Hawaii. We're gonna see this impact people over in Florida simply because of the recent hurricanes. We're gonna see this continue. This is not something that's just gonna be a one-time thing. It's, it's gonna happen, it's gonna be done. No, this is gonna be a major problem. I wanna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Look at this right here. It says FEMA is forced to restrict disaster spending because of low funds. And it goes on to say, from now on, the money will be used only for critical response efforts and not rebuilding. That is crazy. But guess what? This isn't the first time we've seen this. This is something that FEMA has done in the past. This is something that they did, I believe in 2017 as well. They had to restrict spending. But you know what also happened in 2017? We didn't have inflation. We weren't worried about a recession. We didn't have interest rates over 5%. That is why 2023 is extremely different. But let's look at this. How much is FEMA down? Well, let me show you this. It says FEMA is down to its last $3.4 billion as the Maui wildfires and Hurricane Adelia slam the US. $3.4 billion is all they have left. Let's read the key points of this article as well. So here are the key points. It says FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell said this week that the U.S. Disaster Relief Fund has a balance of $3.4 billion, which will be exhausted in the first half of September. That means, again, today is August 31st. Okay, Tomorrow is September 1st, which means in the next two weeks, FEMA is going to be, their fund will be exhausted. Now, let's get back to it. it. Says with funds running low, FEMA is prioritizing the immediate needs of people impacted by the Maui wildfires and Hurricane Adelia uh, that swept through Florida and potential future storms. Keywords is potential. Also goes on to say, President Joe Biden called on Congress Thursday, which is today, to pass $12 billion in additional funding for the disaster fund by next month at the latest when hurricane season reaches its peak. Again, we are now in the peak season for hurricanes, okay? But what is this $12 billion gonna do and, and where is this coming from? Well, this is what Congress has to agree on. We need additional funding for FEMA. Well, here's the big problem and it has to do with the way President Biden is asking for these funds. Look at this right here, because he's asking for $12 billion. I wanna read you this part right here. It says, the $12 billion is part of $40 billion emergency fund request by Biden. That includes $24 billion to help Ukraine in its war with Russia. It also goes on to say that some lawmakers oppose their Ukraine request and want to consider it separately from the other emergency funds. Now, this is big. The reason why this is big is because exactly what is asked next, okay? Let me show you. It says, reporters asked Biden on August 25th in California if there's a possibility he would agree to divide his spending request. Because again, keep in mind right here, he's asking for uh, 12 billion, okay, for FEMA, this is part um, of the $40 billion request, but $24 billion is going to Ukraine. Why is that such a big deal? Well, because of what he said. Is there a possibility you would agree to divide your spending request? President Biden said, none. He is not going to divide that request. The reason why is because he knows if he asked for $12 billion for FEMA, and then $24 billion for Ukraine, guess what? Lawmakers will say, yeah, we'll give you $12 billion for FEMA, but what about Ukraine? It's not gonna happen. You put those two together, and now lawmakers have to agree on the $40 billion because, well, they agree on the $12 billion for FEMA, and FEMA absolutely needs it. 
This is the reason why this is such a big deal. Now, I want to read you a couple other things, okay? One of the things you need to keep in mind is that the money isn't going to just come out of nowhere. We have to uh, pass a bill that's going to allow us to get additional $12 billion. Look at this. It says, with funds running low, FEMA is prioritizing the immediate needs of people impacted by Maui wildfires and Hurricane Adelia that swept through Florida this week and other extreme weather events that may come. Um, this means that other uh, recovery projects would be pushed into the fiscal, the next fiscal year to keep money available for them and the immediate response operations. It says, I want to stress that while immediate needs uh, funding will ensure we can continue to respond to, disastered, to disasters, it is not a permanent solution. Congress must work with us on the supplemental request that the administration has made on behalf of FEMA. Now, one of the things that you got to keep in mind is that if we don't have any money for FEMA, how are we going to rebuild anything? Like community centers? Where's that money going to come from? It has to come from the, the city, the county, the state, or the federal government. Well, in most cases, FEMA is going to offer about 75% of the funds. And if FEMA doesn't have it and they can't afford to pay 75%, well, we're out of luck, SOL. That's part of the problem. So the other issue that we're facing right now is that this is actually gonna turn into more of a political battle. Lawmakers are gonna try to figure out a way to tie FEMA funding to whatever their agenda may be. Exactly what President Biden has just done. He's tying $12 billion of FEMA funding to Ukraine, 24 billion to Ukraine. Do you see why this is an issue? Because it's not just FEMA, it's not just Ukraine. It's, it's many other things. We have a lot of groups that are asking for more funding. The Social Security Administration, they're asking for more funding in the next fiscal year bill. I don't think they're gonna get it. But is FEMA gonna get their money? Is Ukraine gonna get their money? What's gonna happen there? Well, all I can tell you is to be ready because this is going to turn into a major fight. And as it does, again, we don't have a lot of time. In 30 days, we have to pass the, the federal funding bill. These are the 12 appropriation bills for fiscal year 2024 because on October 1st, the federal government would shut down if something doesn't get agreed upon. Right now, there could be a CR, a continuing resolution. That is what many people are expecting. We also could see a stopgap bill, just something that goes for a different bill that goes for the next few months. But uh, other lawmakers say, no, we're not gonna do that. And then the other issue is uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Again, you may have seen this. He froze yesterday for about 20 seconds again, where he didn't know where he was. He didn't know he was speaking. He just stood there, looked off into the distance, and that was it. So we're going to see what happens. But what I can tell you is all those projects that FEMA is potentially going to be funding, well, it's going to be put on hold because they have to wait because of the wildfires, the hurricanes, and any potential disasters coming up. So we will see what happens. And as always, I will keep you updated on everything that's going on. All you got to do is two things. Hit that like button on this video. Also, click that subscribe button so you never miss an update. And I'll see you guys on the next one.